right when we arrived, an ambulance was escorted immediately out of the area with police. This house is now totally flattened after that explosion and debris now scattered from yard to yard. Fewer drivers have actually yielded to pedestrians lately ever since those enforcement checks stopped back in last fall. There are currently 43 open positions and he says that number has increased. Firefighters just came out here a few moments ago to place lights out here as we can likely expect many more people out here. And we spoke to one woman who says this maroon car over here, she saw it getting pushed away in the storm. Quite a bit of work still to be done though. As you can see, there are a lot of cinder blocks, several pages of reports from at least five different agencies. He's got some concerns with the bridge as it's worsened. You can see some exposed rebar. Spray it on the paneling here. You can also do it on the handle a little bit. And the whole point of this is to kind of loosen up the handle. If at 91 years old, you feel like you've not had to work a day in your life, you must love what you do. My heart aches for you and um, to my very soul, I'm broken for you and the sacrifice that your family has made for our community. Strangers, community members, and families speaking directly to Corporal Ben Cooper tonight. A patrol car near downtown Joplin now sits enshrined in flowers and mementos honoring his sacrifice. Their loss should be our loss too. It, it is our loss because we lost important members of our community. I may not have known them, but they're still important and they were still a part of us. Mayor Ryan Stanley called community members to unite during a news conference today. The patrol car now evidence those in the area are doing just that. Citizens of Joplin, Every day we are called to honor the sacrifices of our bravest, and today we are reminded why. Joplin police and city leaders say yesterday's routine call quickly turned violent. Officers initially responded to a disturbance at a shopping center as they attempted to arrest Anthony Felix. He shot at them. This was a violent and unwarranted attack on our officers and is indicative of rise in violence against law enforcement officers we are witnessing nationwide and it has to stop. Police say Felix later sped off in a stolen patrol car, firing at officers. He crashed and police tracked him to a nearby neighborhood. The gunfire continued to ring out. I seen cop cars everywhere, but didn't assume anything bad was coming out of the situation. JPD says Felix continued blasting at officers. An officer eventually struck him after firing repeatedly. Felix and three officers were quickly taken to a hospital. Officer Cooper and Felix later died. We all come together at different times, and this has just so happened to be one of them. And it's been a long time since something like this has happened. And so as a community, we all just come together. And as the stack of honorary decor continues to build, people want Officer Cooper's family to know he will not be forgotten. And their prayers extend to those others still recovering. It's very heartbreaking to see something like this happen, especially to his girls and his wife. A package of roses may be very small, but it's the love and it's the heart that's put with it that matters. And we're all here supporting you and loving you. Even if you don't know our names, we're all still here with love and support for you. She says she could have never imagined her son would become one of thousands of people to lose their life to the virus. And now she wants people to know that these are real people, not just numbers. I didn't expect it to turn out the way it did. I expected that it was gonna get better and come home. All sorts of pictures of Maximus Gideon now hang across his family's home. Only this time, they bring a new meaning, memories left to hold on to. He was just really an all around good kid. This is his mother, yeah. Melissa Lambeth. Along with her many pictures, she remembers all of her favorite moments with Maximus like the times he would stay awake to greet her from her late nights at work. He came running outside and he waited up just to tell me that he loved me. It's those bittersweet moments she now cherishes most. After July 4th weekend, he got very sick. It wasn't until I said, man, I got a headache and my throat's starting to hurt. And he said, me too, mom. I think I need to go get tested. 
Maximus did in fact test positive for the virus, and so did his mom and others. After a few hospital visits, Maximus got much worse. I never imagined that my children would feel what they had felt. Maximus eventually had a 106.8 fever and struggled to breathe. He spent 38 days on life support in St. Louis Children's Hospital. When I was able to ask him if he was hurting, he was able to say yes. When I asked him if he was tired, he was able to tell me yes, and he cried. All I could do was cry and tell him that if he was ready to go home, it was okay. <laughs> Maximus was eventually taken off of life support. His mother, Melissa, had previously been against vaccines, but she and other family members got their shots in hopes they could help protect him when he returned from the hospital, but he passed just before they got their second dose. That's what he would have wanted us to do. Though she knows her vaccine now won't bring her son back, she does want others to hear her message. We try to tell people that it's very real, and it very much takes people away from your family. It's very much there, and that these people have names, and these families hurt. The health department says Maximus's weight may have put him at an increased risk. His family says he had sports asthma when he was a kid, but had no other pre-existing conditions. They also say since he passed away, many of their friends and family who used to be against the vaccine have since decided to get vaccinated. A wave of people made their way to Zinc today for the first time, protesting hatred. Racism that has been spread through this area for way far too long. All hopeful of proving one point. Even out here in your little neck of the woods where you think you don't have to, you know, see the people that you hate, um, we know that hatred is here and we still don't tolerate it. But for many living in the area, it was an unwelcome visit. I think if they want to start trouble, they should do it in their own town. We didn't ask for them. We ain't never done nothing to them. And I don't really see what the reason for him being here. Now, as you can see, there are dozens of people gathered here. A couple of the folks I talked to even came from Branson and Springfield for this. Meanwhile, they're here. There are several locals gathered at the other end of the town right now. Sonny Cropper was among those that made the trip from Springfield. He says the drive was worth the chance to spark conversation. We came here open for dialogue. You know, we want to be able to have conversations with people. And uh, we want to be able to show people that this movement can come to a place like this and keep it peaceful the whole entire time. One Branson man says his grandfather was in the KKK. He came to protest the hatred he learned so much about as a kid. I mean, I was raised around a lot of hateful, spiteful, racist people. And I'm out here to try to put an end to it. My kids don't need to grow up in this. My nieces and nephews don't need to grow up in this. There is no sense for any of this. But locals say they didn't deserve today's visit and don't want another. Really, people just want to go get done and go away. But they say they're afraid another visit is right around the corner. Protesters say they're eager to come back. In Zinc, Arkansas tonight, Michael Van Skoik, KY3 News.